Here's how the Golden State Warriors' special attack keeps improving. Jordan Poole continuing to break out in his third pro season, Andrew Wiggins being number one in the NBA in three-point percentage since December 1st, and Gary Payton II dropping his seventh straight game with at least 14 points are all making the dubs damn dangerous with the return of Klay Thompson looming. With how beautifully Otto Porter Jr., Belly, among others, continue to gain flow within Steve Kerr's system, and how fluently Draymond's running the offense, we're going to break down all that and more regarding the NBA's current king, the team with the best record across the association in the Bay Area's basketball club. Stay tuned to see how the best team in the world took down a top contender in the tough Miami Heat, as all of the dub's pieces get close to being fully intact. Before continuing, only 10.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. We'll get to how the Warriors took care of the Heat, despite Curry racking up two early fouls and scoring under 10 points for the first time this season. But firstly... This Warrior vid you're watching is the 14th different time I've posted on the Warriors' success since the 21-22 campaign kicked off. After a brutal 2021 season, the Dubs have gotten back to dynasty-esque winning, and given I've been uploading every day and how the Warriors have been having success, the Dubs' two-way dominance has become one of my channel's most popular topics, so you have a lot of catching up to do if you're new. There's a long list of opposites between last season's Warriors who barely made the play-in tournament and the 21-22 team who currently owns the best record in the association, but at the very top of that list of differences would be their third-year sensation Jordan Poole, whose development as a reliable, lethal secondary scoring weapon has greatly contributed to the Bay Area's top-of-the-league success. Against the expected contending Miami Heat, coming off the bench in just his second game since returning from health and safety, Poole was electric early and often. He entered the game right after Steph picked up his second foul and immediately got to work, knocking in 14 first quarter points. That combined with a dozen from Andrew Wiggins put the dubs up 33-26 after the first frame. Jordan's extremely dynamic offensively, which goes further than merely his fundamental shooting and ability to utterly explode past his matchup off the bounce. Almost instinctively, it's easy to hone in on the mesmerizing tricks that JP has when handling the rock. Not only does the man have handles on a string, but he utilizes them with astounding quickness, and that works to completely dice up opposing teams' defensive game plans. Before they can even blink, JP's electric first step has already blown by them, and with his ever-improving athleticism and confidence in that springiness, after that initial drive, Defenders still have to be wary of ravaging attacks at the rim. Poole's ability to go through contact at the bucket has greatly improved over the years. While first or second year Poole used to avoid contact around the bucket as a young player, as his athleticism has noticeably vamped, JP just continues to get more and more beastly, converting everything in the paint. Jordan's offensive awareness in terms of his ability to fluidly change direction is a tool he often employs to gain separation. Jordan can either work his way past his matchup with awfully quick first steps, or fool his defender into thinking he wants to do the same thing. But before they know it, he's already stepping back for a pull-up jumper. But to get a full interpretation of how valuable Poole is to Steve Kerr's system, you have to account for the fact that, in just his third pro campaign, Jordan's adopted a veteran-esque, tough mentality that's catapulted him into one of the league's most marketable, and not to mention talented, shot-creating guards. Also, to fully appreciate what Deadpool brings to the table, it's crucial you look past just his on-ball shot creation for himself individually and see the entire lens offensively. JP has significantly matured compared to his rookie and sophomore years in terms of how he's improved his entire offensive repertoire. Jordan's off-ball equity and playmaking ability with defensive drawing gravity that's eerily resembling his stylistic mentor Stephen Curry, that goes a long way towards providing the spacing and rhythm that Golden State's offense possesses. Given the stage he's at in his development, it would be highly disrespectful to label the 22-year-old as simply a backup to Steph. A better term would be to label him as a Curry understudy. Plug in pool to any set that typically makes use of Curry's threat off the catch, and he'll fulfill the role with Curry-esque pull-ups. 
You probably didn't know, but Jordan spent a quarantine period in Boston doing jumping jacks, burpees, mountain climbers, and anything else he could keep his conditioning up with while he was stuck in a hotel room. And those simple at-home workouts clearly paid off as JP dropped a cool 32 piece on 12 for 19 shooting and five for nine from three point range in his new reserve role with the return of Klay Thompson around the corner. Jordan's capable of stepping just inside the arc and knocking down long mid-range shots, especially against bigs in drop coverage, but a reduction in volume has served him well, especially by replacing his mid-range shot diet with a more palatable increase in rim pressure. Poole's shot frequency around the rim this season at 22.2% is up by 3 percentage points from last season, which has been accompanied by a monumental increase in rim field goal percentage, which is at 73.9%, a whopping 24 percentage point increase from when he was a rookie. Much of that rim attacking confidence could be attributed to Poole increasing his strength and gaining muscle over the offseason. He's upgraded his scoring average from 12 points in 2021 to 18.1 this year, and assists per game from 1.9 to 3.4. That's empowered Steve Kerr to give Poole a spare key to the offense, his 59.3 percent true shooting, three percentage points higher than the NBA average, embodies his efficiency as a scorer. Jordan's confidence as a shot creator has also grown. 33% of his buckets this season have been unassisted, a noticeable eight percentage point uptick from last season. Most of that increase has been through his unassisted two-point field goals, 45.4% this season, up six percentage points from 2021. Poole has significantly reduced his shot frequency from long mid-range from 18.3% during his rookie year to 7.3% in his third year, and he's increasing his success rate on those shots from 31.5% as a rookie to 46.7% as a three-year pro. Speaking on Poole, Coach Steve Kerr said post-game against Miami, it was huge. We needed all 32 of his points, and the early foul trouble with Steph, it changed our rotations. What a luxury to be able to come off the bench with a guy who's just started the first 35 games or whatever it was. Jordan has turned into just a critical player for us, and he'll remain to be critical with all those guys coming back, coming off the bench. And Steve is exactly right about that, because the fact that when Clay returns, Jordan Poole's going to be moving to the pine with GP2, Automatic, Iggy, Damian Lee, among others, that's an extremely dangerous second unit for other top contenders. Going back to the game against Miami last night, Andrew Wiggins added 22 points and a key driving dunk with 434 remaining on a quiet night for Stephen Curry, and the Golden State Warriors held off an undermanned Miami Heat team. Jimmy Butler was helped off the court with 314 left in the third quarter after hurting his right ankle, going down awkwardly, leaving coach Eric Spolstra with a worried look on his face given the Heat's significantly depleted roster already. Butler had 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 dimes. Curry had a season-low 9 points. The reigning scoring champion scored his first points on a three-pointer at the 745 mark of the second quarter and quickly had seven points. He wound up three for 17, one of 10 on threes, but give credit to the man because he still had 10 assists. Wiggins made his initial three field goals and scored 12 of his points in the first quarter. Kyle Lowry had 16 points and 11 assists for the Heat on the other side, playing in foul trouble, being whistled for his fifth personal foul before the third quarter even ended. Draymond Green dished out 13 assists, 10 of which came in the first half as he returned from a two-game absence, while Poole came off the bench in his second game back from being sidelined for six games and was absolutely outstanding, as I mentioned before. Wiggins spoke on his third-year teammate Poole, saying, that's the one thing about him. He loves the competition. He loves the game of basketball, and he's always ready. Gary Payton II played lockdown defense in the final frame, which combined with a third quarter injury to Jimmy Butler, helped quiet Miami's attack. When the horn sounded, it was an impressive 115-108 victory as the Dubs moved to 29-7, a full game ahead of the Phoenix Suns in the standings. The young glove keeps gaining confidence as an elite off-ball cutter who streaks to the basket anytime his defender merely turns his head for a split second. As on this play right here, you can see Kyle Lowry maybe trying to draw a charge on the attacking Wiggins, but little does he know that GP2 is about to catch him completely off guard by elusively slipping back door. Kudos to Air Canada for the pass, but it's those elite instincts and awareness that make the bouncy 29-year-old Gary an utterly perfect fit within Golden State's offense. Additionally, it's not like he's simply a slasher who's one-dimensional. Gary's proven himself as a fairly top-notch deep-range marksman as well, 
In the month of December, attempting two and a half triples on average over 13 games, he knocked down 47% of those shots while contributing 9.3 points in 19 minutes on a blistering for his position, 61.7% shooting from the field. Moving on to Andrew Wiggins, who is leading the NBA in three-point percentage since December 1st, as Wiggs is making an insane 54.1% of his distance daggers since that date. And it's not like his lead in that area is a slight advantage, as Wiggins leads any other three-point marksman in deep range efficiency by over five percentage points, and the next two highest are Zach Levine of the Bulls at 49.4, and then Kevin Love at 49.2%. Not only has Andrew gotten more and more comfortable as the seasons progressed, but Otto Porter Jr. is also lighting it up as of late. Porter Jr. closed out the Phoenix Suns on Christmas Day, and in two January games so far this year, the suddenly top-notch 3 and D wing has posted 15 points per game on 4 of 9 shooting from distance and 54.3% shooting from the floor. Additionally, Nemanja Bialica's floor spacing as a high-volume stretch four who's efficient from either wing as well as the corner makes him extremely versatile offensively. After he sets a big body screen, he can either roll to the bucket and finish with efficiency at the rim or pop out to the dagger three-point line. On the other end, Nemanja's defense is also damn versatile, as Big Nemi's a big body who can deal with big locomotives at center up front, who also has the requisite foot speed to stick with guards on the perimeter. Additionally, Nemanja is a decent rebounder, who overall shoots 40% from three and averages nearly 10 rebounds per 36 minutes. Last but not least, Kavon Looney continues to be a limited minute beast, and last night against South Beach's basketball club, it was just another day at the office for Kavon, who's been consistently exceptional after a slow start to the season. Shockingly, the playmaking has been awesome lately for the Dub Center, as last night's game against Miami marked his fifth straight game with multiple assists and that gave him 12 dimes actually in the last three games. But I wanna know your take. Outside of Steph, Draymond, Poole, and Wiggins, who's your favorite player on the Warriors? Best answer earns next video shout out. The top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal, who says, Personally, I think Rondo will really help the Cavs in a big way. As you said, he'd not flourished in his role in LA this season, and I think this is largely due to him not getting to handle the ball as much. Thanks for every amazing answer. I read all of them. Hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.